Hello, everyone. Welcome to the uh, first webinar in the webinar series uh, for youth by youth. And this webinar will focus on family foundations from a youth perspective. Uh, this webinar spirit, uh, series is sponsored by uh, the National Center for Family Philanthropy and YPC, which is Youth Philanthropy Connect, which is a um, subset organization of the Free C Fox Family Foundation. So the technology that we will be using uh, today is uh, GoToWebinar. So uh, before we get started, we would like to just go over some of the features of uh, what you are seeing on your screen. Um, one of the big things is there is a um, red arrow. Uh, this will allow you to maximize and minimize your control panel. So um, this will make it easier for you to uh, see the slideshow and also see the panelists that are on the web webcams in front of you. As well, we do have a uh, question and answers portion of this webinar. And if you would like to submit a question, there is a question tab on the control panel. So if you will maximize that tab, you can type your question in and then send your question uh, privately to me and the other organizers, or you can send it uh, to everyone so that everyone can view your question. Um, and once we get these questions rolling in throughout uh, the information of this webinar, you can send it at any time, and then we will go back and uh, go through the questions during the question and answer uh, portion of the call. So the panelists that we have before you are, um, you have me, Mike Tracy, from the Tracy Family Foundation and Youth Philanthropy Connect. Um, everyone will do formal introductions later on in the call. This is just to give you a good uh, brief introduction of everyone that is here. We have Isabel Griffith uh, from the Andrus uh, Family Fund. Then we have Kylie Semmel from the Free to See Fox Family Foundation. And then we have Justin McAuliffe from the Conrad H. or Con Conrad and Hilton Foundation. So a little bit about my story. Uh, I come from the Tracy Family Foundation. I'm also a program intern with uh, Youth Philanthropy Connect. Um, I've been involved in uh, philanthropic youth philanthropy work since around the age of uh, 13. Uh, my foundation uses a next generation grant program to get us started on um, going through youth philanthropy and I've uh, served on a couple of committees. Um, in my foundation. So that's kind of my philanthropic background, and uh, but we'll get into more formal introductions of everyone else that is on the call. So what we'll cover today, we're going to talk about um, how are youth engaged in philanthropy, and so in what ways are they engaged, uh, what are the different models of, in, of uh, engaging youth in um, the philanthropic sector. And then we'll be learning from some of the different youth. So we have a, a bunch of youth panelists that have great experience in the sector of youth philanthropy, and they'll be able to share their background and their story. And uh, hopefully you can learn a little bit about um, ways that you can incorporate uh, the advice and stories that they tell you into your own philanthropic uh, organization. And then uh, we'll all share um, what have been the favorite experiences of youth engaged in philanthropy and what have uh, the learnings been. Uh, youth Philanthropy Connect has had the opportunity to connect uh, uh, various youth philanthropists from across the nation together and uh, we'll share some of those stories about how we've all been kind of changed by uh, talking with other youth philanthropists and uh, getting to hear from their stories and how that has shaped us. And then we'll end with the question and answer section. So the, this is for the audience and the listeners out there. Um, You'll have the opportunity, again, you can submit questions uh, throughout the webinar using the question section at the control panel. Um, so if you, from anything that you hear on the, uh, on the call, and from if there's one specific thing that you want to ask each one of our panelists, uh, we'll be more than happy to, um, if you submit that question, uh, I'll make sure that, that, uh, they, that you get that question answered. And then we'll have some closing remarks. So to begin with, uh, we are going to do something called polling. So what this means is that this will give us the opportunities, uh, myself and the panelists, to get an idea of who's out there in the audience. And um, 
it'll give us a little bit more information, so it'll help us to uh, learn more about you and how we can specifically um, give you the uh, best information to make this webinar the uh, best possible for all of you. So our first question is, um, how old are you? And so how this will work is the poll should pop up right now, and you just have to click A, B, C, D, U, or E, and then um, we'll close the poll in just a second. So we'll give you some time to answer. So we'll close the poll now, and the result should pop up. So you are seeing kind of uh, the results of the poll uh, that, um, so this will give you an idea of who is on the call. And so we will move on to our next poll question. So this question is, how long have you been engaged in philanthropy? So again, the poll will pop up and um, answer the poll, and then we will close it. So the poll is now closed, and uh, this will give you the opportunity to look and see who else is on the call and give you a chance to um, kind of know the different experiences that we're, uh, we're all bringing into this uh, conference. And next question. So why did you choose to attend this session today? Uh, we all have different uh, uh, reasons that for attending, some of us are youth that are just getting started, but some of us have been doing youth for a few years now. Um, so this will give us the opportunity for us to gauge um, what, what temperature we have out there. Thank you very much. So this gives you the opportunity to see who all is out there and uh, what experiences we're bringing. Okay, so now uh, if I could have Kylie um, uh, do a quick introduction uh, for us, and then she will tell you a little bit about the history of YPC. Hi, so my name is Kylie Semmel, and I am a sophomore in high school, and I live in Los Angeles, California, and I'm a member of the Free C. Fox Family Foundation's junior board and the Youth Philanthropy Connects um, leadership team. And so I've been on the Free C. Fox, Fam Fox Families Foundation since I was eight years old. And um, I joined because I wanted to get involved with the work that my family did in philanthropy. And then I joined the Youth Philanthropy Connects leadership team after I had attended mul multiple conferences and decided that I wanted to be involved in the planning. So Youth Philanthropy Connect's mission is to, it's to connect youth in and to make a network of philanthropists that enjoy sharing together. And so um, it is a fun and exciting way for the youth to engage in philanthropy. And um, we, it, all together, we give, to, um, we give to different nonprofits. And it's a way to develop different skill or a way to develop different knowledge about different ways of giving and how other youth in Youth Philanthropy Connect give in different ways. And so the way that Youth Philanthropy Connect started was that the, the Lumpkin Family Foundation and Free to See Fox Foundation decided that they wanted to come together, the youth boards decided they wanted to come together and have a joint meeting. And so in that joint meeting they compared um, models of their grant giving and then they decided that they wanted to make this bigger and they wanted to have more foundations involved in the joint meeting process. So that's when we had our first gap our first gathering at Disneyland. And so it wasn't called Youth Philanthropy Connect then, but it was the same basis. And so this was the first retreat. It was the youth on board retreat. And so five different families came together and 
led this conference and then decided that they wanted to make this an annual thing, which became Youth Finds We Connect. And then we have become so popular that we, this year, are going to have semi-regional um, conferences and it's going to happen in five different cities and Mike will explain more about that later. That's the background. Of yes, thank you, Kylie. So um, YPC all, uh, started just from two uh, families and the youth and their family really just wanted to have the opportunity to connect with other youth philanthropists were do, that were doing similar work to them. So uh, that's what started this joint meeting and then the board retreat and now the annual conferences. So for the past three years, these conferences have gotten so big and have had uh, youth philanthropists from all across the country uh, come to them that us at y YPC decided that we need to broaden our reach even more and go to the five various regions that are across the United States. So we'll be having a gathering in um, Seattle, Indianapolis, New York City, um, Houston, and uh, Williamsburg, Virginia. And so those are the cities that comprise um, the, the various events that we'll have this coming summer. And it's for everyone that will attend, but you'll learn about that later on in the, uh, in the PowerPoint. So now, if we could get um, Isabel to give us a quick introduction of yourself. Alrighty, hi everybody. Um, my name is Isabel Griffith. Um, I'm 18 and I'm a freshman at the University of Pennsylvania. Um, I'm a member of the youth board of my family foundation called the Andrews Family, Found uh, and Andrews family Fund, um, whose mission is to support organizations um, that advance social justice and um, improve outcomes of vulnerable youth. And I think I have uh, attempted to foster this mission um, through my involvement and my active involvement for the past four years um, on my youth on the youth program uh, by supporting organizations that help um, that help kids of the next generation uh, be be ready and um, have the have the skills and uh, resources to grow. Hey everyone, um, my name is Justin McAuliffe. I'm 27 years old and uh, my involvement with philanthropy uh, pretty much started when I was back in high school and about 16, 17 years old. I was uh, on a service trip um, to China actually volunteering in orphanages there and uh, after I got back I was able to write sort of a, a grant um, request or proposal uh, to my family's foundation and uh, ended up getting a small grant um, out of our president's discretionary fund. So that was sort of my first involvement in philanthropy and then a couple of years after that uh, we formally created our Generations in Giving program which is our uh, intergenerational giving program so uh, family members have the opportunity to allocate a small budget each year of uh, grant making dollars to organizations that, that they think are doing great work and then there's also a, a matching component and, uh, and a volunteer program as well. Um, so I was involved with that and then about uh, 10 months ago I joined the foundation full-time as a program associate. So now uh, this is my full-time career and I'm working um, with my family's foundation um, as my sort of full-time job and um, as part of my job I'm overseeing the Generations and Giving program and so uh, I'm involved with the uh, family philanthropy and are trying to gauge uh, family members with our organization, um, foster a sense of philanthropy in younger family members. Hi. Uh, so now we will move on to our uh, panel portion of the call. So I will ask each one of the panelists a question and we will just move down the line. So uh, first question, how old were you when you started and what is your favorite part about your engagement? So Isabel, if you could start us off. Alrighty, so um, I uh, became 
involved with my with the youth service program when I was 14 years old, so I was in ninth grade. Um, and I think I would say, looking back on my experience, my favorite part was was kind of how I got to really solidify my interests and my passions, and how um, it really kind of fostered them throughout the process. And that I was a 14 year old kid who wanted to be wanted to be listened to, and and who and people cared about what I had to say. And I think that. Um, looking back now and, and seeing kind of where I think my path is going to go from here and throughout college and kind of looking at career choices, that um, youth philanthropy really helped solidify my passions. Um, and I think that, that would probably be my, my favorite part about my engagement. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Justin, if we could hear your answer. Yeah. So. Uh, I Like I mentioned, uh, I was about 16, 17 years old when I first got involved, and ever since then it's sort of been increasing uh, the level of involvement. And um, I would say that my favorite part of the engagement has always been um, getting to see the impact. So that first uh, experience when I you know, actually got to go out and see um, the orphanages in China and then to come back and, and hear what, what the impact of the grant that we've made was. Um, meant something, I think, a little bit more because I had actually seen the the conditions and um, and so I knew that uh, what had had actually happened over there. And I think being able to see the impact has always been for me, you know, my favorite part of uh, of getting involved. Thank you so much, um, Kylie. Um, so I was eight years old when I joined my family's foundation, and I think like my favorite part about it was that I was getting to do this thing with my family that all like the older kids got to do, but then it also was getting to give to organizations that I really liked. Like I got to choose where I wanted to give my or give my grant money, and I really just liked getting to have like that independence and that choice of um, destination of like my grant money. Yeah, uh, what we've seen uh, with many of, uh, in talking to many of the youth philanthropists that are in our network, um, just giving them a seat on the table has been kind of one of the biggest things that they've learned and having the opportunity to see um, the inner workings of the foundation and having a say at such an early age on the um, uh, where the dollars go is such a powerful thing. Um, I, I've, I've especially had the opportunity of experiencing that through my own work um, with my own foundation. Um, so, the next question for uh, the panelists, what is your role or that of youth within your foundation or overall giving? Is there a model you can share? Isabel? Um, all right, so um, the role of the youth um, in our, in my family's foundation, um, it was really this idea that by involving the youth in philanthropy and by involving kind of this this new generation um, ideas and passions and interests um, that we can really help foster those individual people, but then they can also gain this awareness of their communities and gain an awareness of helping others. Um, and I think that the the model that my foundation uses is this youth board, right? It's this um, all family, uh, some of my very distant cousins, but family nonetheless, um, who are involved in researching organizations of their choice and um, have the opportunity to do volunteer hours uh, to increase the grant money and um, basically just and being able to present this and communicate effectively and persuade almost giving like a pitch I would say um, to older members of the Andrews Family Fund um, to give this give this money and grant um, to the organization of your choice. Yeah, throughout our work we have seen this model of having a junior board as a very effective way of getting youth involved and getting them started on the process. Um, I know with my foundation we just started a few years ago implementing a, a formal um, advisory board for youth that are involved in our foundation and it has been an effective way of getting more people interested in what the foundation is doing and also continuing fostering that family engagement that we all like to see. Um, Justin? Sure, yes. Yeah. So uh, it would be um, our Generations and Giving program, which uh, was an a intergenerational, um, essentially a, a sort of a giving fund. Um, and there's a discretionary budget that family members are given. But the part that I, I think is the best is, is actually um, uh, if family members um, contribute their own money to something, it's matched two to one. And if they contribute their own money, 
and they also volunteer time. It's matched three to one, and that's obviously up to a certain cap of something. Um, I think depending on um, the age and or and some other criteria, but um, I think that's really great because I think it encourages family members to actually donate their time and and get more involved and and more engaged, and uh, and I think really you know f uh, find their passions and and think hard about what they really want to sort of spend their their volunteer hours on. Um, and then I, um, we recently started um, a board internship program where um, each year two of the Generations and Giving members are elected to serve as interns on our actual foundation board. So they get to go to all the board meetings and they get to sort of be a shadow on the wall and hear what goes on and how the discussions are, are sort of held. And then um, they actually get to make a grant. Um, as a team, uh, they get together and they uh, they make a, a um, not um, terribly small, but um, uh, not not a huge grant either. But uh, and they they do a, a full process where they do write up, they do background research, due diligence, and then they uh, eventually do a progress report afterwards. Um, so it gives them an idea of the sort of the process of, of grant making at the foundation as well. Yeah, that that is um, a great example of uh, the of just the, the power of getting the youth involved in the process because um, youth really do respond well to hands-on training and so I think anybody on this call that is a um, youth if you take action and um, try to get involved in the grant making that, that of your organization you can learn a lot from that those opportunities um, my, my foundation has a similar next generation grant program similar to uh, Justin's Foundation, the Hilton Foundation, um, and I really like the uh, ownership that I kind of get with that that money. Um, yes, it is a small grant, but it's my little impact that I'm able to use through the foundation. Um, Kylie? So the Free to See Fox Junior Board's role is that they are, so we have a grant cycle where each member of the junior board is allotted $2,000 and they get to choose where they would like to grant their money as long as it fits into the overall board's um, mission which is to maximize the potential of youth and so they get to pick their grant and they then give their money and make a grant presentation and then we also have just started last year we had a collaborative grant cycle that we are continuing on this year where the all of the youth of the junior board came together and chose a topic for the collaborative grant cycle to be based on and then um, we had different org nonprofits apply and uh, say how much like money they would like and what organization it went to as long as it felt fell under the theme of the collaborative grant cycle last year it was stem through the arts was our um, subject and then we all decide together where we want to give the money and so that's like the junior boards overall role in the boards, like grant making. Awesome. Thank you, Kylie. Um, and we've seen, again, like I said, the, the junior board and giving them the opportunity to be um, a pivotal member in um, and take ownership of certain grant dollars is, uh, is a good way of getting uh, more youth involved. Uh, also, just a quick reminder, uh, again, uh, you can anytime during this call uh, submit questions and how you do that is it's under your control panel under the questions tab you will, will type in your question and then you can submit it privately or which will only send it to the organizers uh, and the panelists and or you can submit it all which means everyone can view the question so please send this and send in your questions and we we will address those all at the end of our call during the question answer section. So moving on to the next question, um, how has your youth philanthropy experience shaped you and where do you want to see youth philanthropy grow? Isabel? Alrighty, um, so I think that, like I said, looking back on this whole experience, I almost um, think of philanthropy as part of this like roadmap or this kind of pathway that I've been going on my entire life of really trying to um, find out what I love and find my passions and figure out kind of what my calling is and so I think that um, philanthropy has done this for me and I think and, and it's kind of gotten to me gotten me to the place I am now and it's I think that it has um, given me lots of great skills such as effective communication and um, like when you're a 14 year old having to 
having to present something that you care about to a group of adults, it's slightly intimidating, but it's one of those one of those really, really essential skills that you're going to need for the rest of your life. And so I think that because I got to um, have put myself in maybe an uncomfortable situation, I also got to learn a lot through that process, and I also got to learn a lot about myself and what I what I liked and and what I cared about and what kind of ignited something in me. And um, and so that's kind of made me this kind of relentless searcher for what I love. Um, and now I'm I'm currently pursuing something that I really love, and I think I want to do international health work. Um, and so, but I think that through philanthropy, I've gotten to this, this um, kind of like I said, like relentless trying to find what I want, what I what I want to do, and what my career wants to be. Um, and I think looking ahead, something I feel so so lucky is for is that I, I I do have a supportive family, one that wants to hear me, and one that wants to listen to what I what I love and wants to support me in what I do. But I also realize that not everyone has that. Um, has that gift in life, and so I think that um, the next thing I'd want to see in philanthropy is being able to kind of give this gift of voice or this the, the, the ability to have a voice and the ability to make change in your community to kids that um, maybe don't don't have the opportunity or would never or would never get to use those skills or would never want to be or would never be listened to when they're 14 years old about a topic because I think that 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 for me was something that helped me mature a lot and that helped me kind of come into my own a little bit and um, really find out what I cared about. So, Yeah, that, that's, that's really inspiring because um, I think youth philanthropy um, really does give you the opportunity to look at a lot of different experiences that you wouldn't have and be put into some situations. I know growing up I can remember those awkward site visits with my parents when I don't really know what a site visit is and what am I doing, um, but you have the opportunity to really uh, get to know yourself better and uh, about grant making as a whole while you're going through the process. Um, Kylie? Um, so youth, youth philanthropy has taught me to be a leader in like different situations. I see myself like taking charge in like class projects or just really like I feel like I've learned to really speak about what I want to be said and like what I want to be heard and so I really like how Youth Philanthropy has helped me do that and then also um, like Isabel it's showed me like what I enjoy doing which is like giving to people who need or, or giving like where needed and so I really enjoy that Youth Philanthropy has given me this like out or this way to do this rather than just not being able to and seeing everything go by that you would like to be able to help but you aren't able to, but through the youth philanthropy, I feel like I really have been able to impact the, my community how I enjoy to. Yeah, it really is something special that you have an outlet um, to do this work, and it's uh, something very unique. And so that's why I think also what makes it so powerful is when um, youth who have this opportunity, this unique opportunity, come together, they're able to share these experiences that um, not a lot of people have, but it's uh, a very powerful experience. Justin? So uh, for me, I think that uh, youth philanthropy, I, I think, was really exciting because it was a way to align sort of um, these sort of big social issues that I cared about and would read about and see on the news and things with kind of my everyday life because um, before that, um, you know, I kind of do my go to school, get home, um, think about, you know, exams and um, internships and things like that. But none of it was really, you know, making a difference kind of with these big social issues that I'd read about and that, that really, um, that I was kind of, you know, trying to, I think, find a way to, to make a difference um, with. And so um, that's, that's what really uh, excited me about it, is that I was actually feeling like I was making a difference um, in a very small way maybe, but, but a difference nonetheless. And what really excites me about um, youth philanthropy kind of moving forward is, um, is sort of around the impact investing and the social entrepreneurship movements that are happening. Um, I think it's really exciting that young entrepreneurs that I, I hear about and um, and talk to these days. Um, they may be interested in creating companies that don't, you know, necessarily have um, a social model sort of already built into them, but then they have a social component that they're adding to it, like a one-for-one -one model, or maybe a certain percentage of, of revenues are going to 
a charity or something like that. So I think it's really cool that um, youth are, are starting to think about philanthropy not as just a traditional, um, you know, grant making sense, but also just in, in their everyday lives. Um, so, so yeah, I think that's that's where I'm I'm hoping there's going to be a lot of movement in the future. Yeah, um, I agree completely. I think that uh, the the biggest growth that youth philanthropy has is um, the the new generation. This new generation. Um, Youth Philanthropy Connect has done some studies along with the uh, uh, Foundation Center, and uh, we've shown that this is the biggest generation, or um, the biggest movement of money going on to this next generation. So uh, this next generation will have the opportunity to create a lot of change, and uh, we've seen that they, they are thinking differently about the meaning of philanthropy and how philanthropy can be incorporated into your life. And so that's why I think youth philanthropy is such an important aspect, because if you introduce it early, it will always be a part of um, their life and the way they think about um, uh, what they're going to do. Um, so last question before we move on to uh, the question answer section. And we've had quite a few questions rolling in, so thank you very much to everyone who has submitted a question. Um, we will try to answer as many as we can, but if not, we will um, I will send those all to the panelists and we'll uh, try to get them answered for you uh, after the webinar if we can't ad address all of them. Uh, but last question for the panelists. Uh, what is your best advice to other youth who might be starting out or struggling? Um, so we might have some of those youth on the call right now, but uh, what, what would you say to them? Isabel? Um, alrighty, so I think that um, something that was very uh, useful advice that I got when I was first starting out was um, was really, like I said before, solidifying those those interests because I found that it was much easier for me to learn the different skills of communicating to adults and going on my site visits and doing my research of organizations that I that were really close to my heart. And I think that um, that that by really having kind of a soul searching moment where you where you're where you're thinking about, okay, what am I interested in? What do I, what do I care about a lot? Then that that was really helpful for me to to become more comfortable with all of the more uncomfortable things of the, of the whole process and being young and trying to trying to make a difference, but also feeling slightly uncomfortable throughout it. Um, and I think that, uh, but and I know that a lot of people on this call are people that are that are starting boards or that are older or that are maybe not that aren't youth. And I think that um, something that I found very useful was was knowing that there was a clear mission or a clear focus of my organization and, and helping that helped me um, kind of feel like I was a part of something and felt like that I that I was also part of this mission and that what I did it, um, could support it. Yeah, that is um, definitely one of the, the bigger things is uh, people, youth like a uh, to be involved in like the process and I think a lot of people come up and they're asking us so why like how do we start getting youth engaged and um, I think the biggest way you can start is look go to the youth in your foundation and, a and ask them so they're involved in that what you're talking about finding those uh, passions so that you're interlining the overall foundation's mission with their personal missions that they have and the interests that they have because I mean um, you're not going to find the answer just by thinking about, okay, what are you thinking? Um, you have to go ask the youth themselves and be, let them be a part of the process of uh, generating this engagement. Um, Kylie? Um, one, like, I really think that giving to things that you like doing and like granting to nonprofits that actually do work that benefits things that are enjoyable to you really made the whole, like, Youthful, like philanthropy more enjoyable for me at least so like I enjoy doing theater so I gave a grant to No Limits which is about helping people who are hard of hearing or youth that are hard of hearing do theater and get be able to hear and have like speech therapy like through theater and so I really enjoyed that and then that really made the whole process more enjoyable also just knowing that there are other youth doing the same things that you are doing is very, was like very reassuring to me because when I started, I was like, "Oh, I'm the only person doing this. Like, I don't know anybody else who do who does this." And then we went, we had like a youth philanthropy connect conference, and I learned that like so many other kids are also doing this. You just like have to find them. So just knowing that there's others doing that made it more enjoyable for me because I got to meet youth that do this, and then now like we're all friends through 
like philanthropy, and I just think that's something really important to remember. Yeah, I, I do agree with, um, I, I went to, and how I got connected with YPC, or Youth Philanthropy Connect, was through the conferences, and I experienced a similar, it's very powerful to meet those other youth philanthropists that share this, this passion with you for doing philanthropy, because philanthropy is kind of, it's not a common thing, and uh, it's a really cool um, experience and a very powerful learning experience when you, you have that chance to connect with other youth philanthropists. Uh, Justin? Yeah, so I would I would say that um, uh, a great way to to for someone to break into philanthropy and to strengthen their philanthropic skills would actually be to just sort of start out being philanthropic with your time as opposed to you know beyond financial resources um, because uh, I think you get a great perspective of organizations when you're working on the ground with them and I think you start to build build up. Uh, a certain kind of background and a foundational knowledge of, of the social sector that, that then can inform your grant making. Um, and then I think it also kind of forces you to really get engaged with the mission and, and make yourself um, ask questions like, you know, am I, am I really passionate about the work and, you know, can I really wake up early and go and, and do this every day? Um, and that, I think, you know, is, is then going to inform um, your philanthropy in, in terms of your grant making and, and you know, what, what organizations you really want to support and what missions you want to support. Um, and then I actually, I, I really agree with uh, Kylie around uh, needing to build a network and um, uh, finding friends who are also involved in philanthropy because that to me when I was uh, getting started um, maybe, you know, like six or seven years ago, um, I started to meet more and more friends who would volunteer often and who also um, were engaged in philanthropy and that really helped me um, stay involved and, and really passionate about the sector and, um, and you know, inspired and, and you know, keeping um, uh, really um, engaged with everything that was going on. And, um, and so, yeah, I think that's a, that's a really important component as well. Thank you, Justin. Um, so that is all we have for the uh, prepared questions. So we'll move on to our question and answer section. And we've had quite a few questions uh, pour through, so we will try to address all of them. Uh, but to start off with, uh, the first question that I have for everyone, um, is there anyone in any of your families who has been more difficult to engage in your foundation? If yes, how, do you, how would you suggest to engage them? So does anybody uh, want to take on this question? Or if so, everyone can have a shot at it. Um, well, I just have a uh, kind of a personal story about that. So my senior year of high school, I, w I remember being on um, a conference call um, and hearing one of my family members um, speak about a certain topic that, or speak about a certain organization that she was interested in. Um, and I remember feeling almost slightly uh, like I wish she could have conveyed herself better. I wish she could have communicated better because obviously she cared a lot about it, but I just felt like it wasn't very... Um, persuasive or effective in the way that she was talking about it and I remember feeling like oh but she was also in ninth grade she was younger she wasn't um, hadn't had the experience of it, it was her first time um, participating on the youth board um, so I think that that definitely contributed to it but um, I think there are definitely certain skills that, that or certain things that you should be aware of before you start that that oh yes you're going to be on a conference call with a group of adults a group of adults that have been working in philanthropy for whatever amount of time and they're expecting a certain kind of proposal of, a, of an organization, and I think that she wasn't quite ready for that. Um, and you could definitely, you were, everyone was pretty aware of it, I think. So it's just, I think it's something that those skills are not first nature to everybody. So. Thank you very much, Isabel. Um, do we have any other um, questions about, it's questions about engagement. So do you have any other tips for anybody about how they can get those those who are a little more difficult to engage um, in the foundation. I think for me, one of the best things is create many different avenues for youth to be engaged. Um, so in my foundation, I have we have grant programs, uh, matching, and just next gen grant programs, next generation grant programs for um, the youth uh, to be involved in. We also have committees within the foundation that um, so youth can become a, a part of those and kind of start learning about one specific section 
of uh, the foundation's work. Or uh, we also have two uh, board seats uh, for youth. Uh, one's a year-long board seat and one's a three-year board seat for uh, specific youth. And it's starting um, at the age of 18 and above. And this will give the youth an opportunity to have a formal board seat and go through the formal board and grant cycles that the board does and so it can act as an education for them. Um, so moving on, uh, another question that we have, is there anything else that you would like your foundation to do for your own development? Financial or governance education, a different grant program, um, so is, this is more dealing with the personal um, kind of through your foundations and your philanthropic personal development. Uh, is there anything that your foundation does or you would like to see more foundations do for uh, helping the personal development of, the, of their youth? Hey, this is, uh, this is Justin. Um, I know one thing that we do that I think is really great is beyond uh, just the, um, the general grant making that is open to the generations and giving um, family members, uh, we also have um, sort of retreats that we organize and informational sessions around uh, fundamentals of grant making and um, doing your uh, due diligence uh, around organizations. Um, and so I, I think those are, are really great, not just uh, giving the opportunity for family members to give away funds, but also kind of providing educational opportunities for them in a, in a formal setting um, so that, you know, they can kind of uh, strengthen and um, increase the number of tools and, um, that they have to, to make effective grants. Thank you very much, Justin. So I think um, probably we're only going to have time for two more questions. So um, here's another one. Do you feel like you know your family better as a result of being involved in the family's philanthropy? So uh, all of you are from family foundations. So how do you feel that the foundation has deepened your connection with your family or given you more opportunities to stay, to stay involved with uh, your family as a whole? I think that my family, I've known, gotten to know more people in my family from it or just gotten to know them better because since we all do give individual grants to places that we enjoy, you kind of learn everyone else's interests and you see like what really makes them enjoy giving and where they really, you see like that spark in them where they really do enjoy this whole process. And so I, I would say yes. Um, I also, so we have a family reunion like every four years usually, and so it's very interesting to, you're a really different person from when you're 12 years old to when you're 16 years old and when you are on this youth board, and a lot of my family members are, and I get to hear them over the call and hear kind of like what Kylie said, like their, their interests and, and how, how they've changed since the last time I've seen them, and then I see them a few years later and we can talk about things that we couldn't talk about when we were 12 years old, right, and, and kind of how we grow up together, and we kind of grow up learning a lot about the ourselves and how that comes through in our calls and how that comes through in our organizations that we that we uh, research and give grants to and I think that that interest and passions of everyone is, is just a very good indicator of kind of who that person is so I think definitely for sure I've gotten to know a lot of my family members through um, philanthropy. Yes um, I, I agree with you um, I, I kind of view my foundation as the connection with um, for uh, connecting all of us together as we all move along in life. Um, my foundation, our, our youth, we have a very large number of youth. We have uh, 47 in the third generation. So um, we are a big group and we all are getting older and we're moving on, but the foundation is an opportunity for us to keep us all together because when I know that I'm going to a conference call or a meeting for the foundation and about its work, I'm doing it with my aunts and uncles and cousins who I haven't really seen and so it's an opportunity for us to connect. Um, so last question for everyone. Um, so this is a very general question, but how does your foundation define youth? Um, is there an age range? Um, and, and how do each one of your programs, are, are they uh, speci specifically associated with one group of youth or are they designed for other purposes? So kind of if we could just have each one go down the line with um, how you guys look at youth. 
Sure. Um, so um, there are three, I think, three different sections of the board. So when I was on during high school, which is the teen, the youth service project or youth service program board was um, for high schoolers. I believe it's 14 to 18. And, um, and then there is this board for college age students called Board Experiential Triad, which is also also um, called BETS, I believe. Um, and then after that would be um, the Andrews Family Fund, which is um, heavily adults. Like my, my parents were both on that board. And so um, there are these three different, and I think that that's, it's a really important division because um, teens get to, people with similar ages get to speak to each other, but then they get to kind of grow and then become part of a different board that might meet more, because I think that um, the BETS board, the, the intermediate, the college board, um, meets in New York every few months. So it, it continues the engagement, and I think that it continues the engagement as you continue to mature and get older. Um, so that's, it's just, it's split into those different sections, but youth is, the youth board I was on during high school was the teen board for the 14 to 18 year olds. Thank you, Isabel. Kylie? Um, so the Free C. Fox Families Junior Board is everyone 20 and under. I started when I was 8, and that's the youngest so far that anyone's ever started. But I think we're going to get like some of my younger cousins to actually start now. But um, So everyone 20 and under, and then when you turn 21, you get, if you get asked to be on the like, big board, so like the, just like the formal board, then you can get a seat on the board. And then actually when you are in college and on the junior board, we have a junior, like, junior senior board because um, part of our mission is that you have to, that your um, nonprofit that you're giving to has to be in the Los Angeles or Santa Clara counties, which is where like all of our family kind of lives. And so, but when you go to college, a lot of the people go East Coast. So my sister goes to school in Boston. So she's allowed to give a grant to any um, nonprofit in Boston. And so anybody who's on the, or is in college is on that board and has like that freedom to give within like their state or like city and so that's kind of like our ages of youth but I'm on the junior board right now. Thank you Kylie. Uh, Justin? So uh, for us uh, I believe how we break it down is um, it's 13 and under I think um, is the, the sort of the, the lowest age group um, and I, I don't remember the specifics but I, you know, I think it's quite limited, uh, their involvement. And then from 13 to uh, 25, I believe, up to 25, um, that's when you start to, to get sort of your own little um, discretionary budget and your matching fund. And then 25 and over, the, the amounts jump up. And then um, it's also done by generation, so second and third generation. And so that also, you know, has its own age ranges, the second generation being mostly... Um, you know, one age range and third generation being another age range. Um, and so as you jump up that ladder, there's also sort of larger uh, budgets. Um, and then with our board interns, um, that's generally, um, uh, well, it's a, a, um, a sort of, um, we uh, have an application process. And so it's, um, it's sort of based on, um, you know, the merit of the applicants. And so it's generally the older applicants who, who are accepted to that. We don't have like a sort of a, I think maybe the cutoff is like 12 or 13, but these are all kind of still ongoing discussions as to what we should expect from different age ranges and what level of information is going to be too much at, at what age and, and sort of what's going to be the most engaging content for them. Because obviously we can't put everyone in the same bucket and sort of have like a two hour presentation on, um, you know, on um, compliance issues and, and self-serving or something like that and expect eight year olds to be able to sit through that and then not hate philanthropy afterwards. And so um, I think, yeah, we, we, we're still sort of thinking about all that, but um, that's generally how we've broken it down so far. Thank you very much. Um, so this concludes our question portion, question answer portion of the call. Um, we will try to um, get most of these questions answered. If we did not answer your question, uh, we'll send them out to the panelists after the call and hopefully we can send it out to all the attendees uh, with some of the um, kind of most asked, frequently asked questions and uh, their answers so that you can still get that information. Um, so I will pop the PowerPoint back on for everyone. And so now uh, just kind of a quick um, plug for 
The National Center of Family Philanthropy is the National Forum on Family Philanthropy will be happening October 14th to the 16th um, this year. Uh, so it'll be happening from October 14th to the 16th in 2015 in Seattle, Washington. So this is the National Forum on Family Philanthropy. Also, uh, this is, again, a webinar series for Youth by Youth. So these are all the upcoming dates for the rest of the webinars that are in this series. All these series are specifically uh, developed for youth um, in uh, family foundations, community foundations, any youth that are participating in uh, youth philanthropy. Uh, and so for each of these webinars, there will be a youth panel or youth presenters that will talk about the uh, various topics that we have above. As well, this is the, um, the five different regional gatherings that Youth Philanthropy Connect is hosting this year. So these will be another opportunity for youth philanthropists in the various regions of the country to come together and talk about their philanthropic work, um, learn more about grant making and uh, youth philanthropy in general and also uh, to actually go through the youth grant making process and grant out money to nonprofits. So these, this slide is um, the closing words of wisdom. So we've actually um, gone out and asked um, youth within our network to, talk, to give us some of their um, biggest words of wisdom for uh, people that are starting out in the work of youth philanthropy or for just youth that want to get involved in this. Um, so this here's what the youth say. Um, I'm only going to point out one and then I'm going to ask the panel to each give kind of their closing word of wisdom. Uh, but I think the most important one that I see on the screen is don't reinvent the wheel. Learn from and elaborate on what works for others. So some of the things that we have done um, with my own foundation, we've learned that from um, being involved with Youth Rampy Connect and talking with other foundations and what works for them. Um, because if it works for another foundation, it'll probably work for you. But definitely um, look at what, what works for other foundations, but make it your own. Because uh, the youth that are in other foundations are not the same youth that, that are in your foundations. So make sure to go out there and um, ask youth, present the uh, model that you've, you've seen from other foundations and get youth involved in the process of starting up um, a, a youth engagement program. So if we could have everyone kind of go down the line and um, say your closing words of wisdom, Isabel. Okay, so um, my closing words of wisdom, something that I have really benefited from is um, I think that excitement and I think that passion is very um, infectious and so I think that the people that I've been surrounded by, luckily that I've been surrounded by, have been really excited about youth philanthropy and have been really excited to share their ideas and have, ex and have been happy to hear what I have to say and you can just hear it in their voice. So I think that enthusiasm really um, captures youth and um, can help kids feel really comfortable and happy with what they're doing and so I think that those people that are trying to start up programs or um, trying to better their program is is this having these adults, I think this is one of the questions, but having these adults that are there that are just very willing to listen and excited to hear what you have to say and um, that, that for me that was something that really helped me um, get excited about what I was doing. Thank you, Isabel. Yeah, uh, we've seen that having adults that are willing to um, work with the youth and just really just listen, um, like you said, Isabel, that's a very key thing for youth, uh, adults that are dealing with youth and philanthropy. Kylie? Um, I'd say one my closing words of wisdom is to start young and really let the youth have a say in whatever it is you're doing, and then also for the youth to do what you love, like through philanthropy, so like incorporate your interest, in, your interest into what you are doing and whatever opportunities you have, because it just makes it all more enjoyable and really fun. Thank you very much, Kylie. Uh, Justin? Yeah, I, I think philanthropy should really be about connecting the dots for people, and it should be about um, really trying to think about what you're passionate about and and I really do think that um, 
philanthropy might not be something that all youth kind of um, gravitate towards immediately, but I think that everyone has something that they're passionate about, where it, whether it's sports or the environment or human rights issues, and it's about trying to kind of align and connect all of those interests together, and also with what kind of activities you like to do. You might be more sort of into the private sector, and, and entrepreneurship is, is what really um, excites you, or, or you might be more on the social side, and um, and sort of international uh, human rights work or something like that might be um, the kind of work that you love to do. So I think it's about exploring and, and trying a lot of different things. And there's so many different types of philanthropy out there now and so many, I mean, it's, it's just such a spectrum. So there's a lot to, to explore and I think that every, there's something for everyone, in other words. It's just a matter of getting out there and, and finding it. So. Thank you very much, everyone, and um, that was all very, very good advice. Um, and I think uh, everyone on the on this webinar has learned a lot from your experiences, so thank you for sharing. Um, I just want to remind everyone that a survey will pop up after this webinar ends, and uh, so please fill that out. Give us some feedback, evaluations on how you like this webinar, uh, what you thought of it, and uh, ways we can improve. Uh, so. I just want to again thank all the panelists for being um, being on this uh, webinar with me and uh, giving the opportunity to share your stories. I think uh, everyone learned a lot from it. Uh, thank you everyone for coming and also thank you for the National Center of Family Philanthropy and uh, Youth Philanthropy Connect for sponsoring this. Uh, I hope all of you have a good rest of the day. Thanks so much.